What up, y'all? Check this out. We talked a little bit about it on Tuesday night's main event, but Halo star Pablo Schreiber, Schreiber, however you say his name. And he has some interesting things to say. I want to give you my thoughts just strictly from a just a property perspective. But this is what happened in doubling down on arguably the most I'm reading is from Bound Again the Comics, by the way. Worst creative liberty taken in a series almost entirely comprised of them. Halo star Pablo has insultingly affirmed that he has no interest in listening to critics who are unhappy with the series decision to constantly depict the character Master Chief with his helmet. So this is what he says. Um, and this was to SFX magazine. People who don't feel the helmet was necessary to come off, they're at such an early conception of what the show could be. In order to examine the discrepancy between the two versions of the character, his Spartan human sides, you can't tell that story without taking the helmet off. If you don't agree with the helmet coming off in the show, you don't like our show, so there, <laughs> he says, so uh, there's no point in discussing it. That's the old, uh, if you don't like my comics, don't buy my books. Now look, I get it. OK, they had a different idea, but I just want to give you perspective from a fan. We're not talking about people here that like <clears throat> it's a brand new property. Nobody knows anything about it. Uh, we're not talking about folks that are not fans of Halo. The people that took exception to that in that show it, are the people that have they understand what Halo is and what it's about. And that seems to break everything. Um, a lot of it, let's just say that, with removing a, of uh, Master Chief's helmet. Now, they're doubling down on it, and I, I don't anticipate that that's ever going to change. They went into it with an idea, and that was always their idea, as stupid as it may be. But this is the way that I see it, as a, you know, obviously having our own property here at Ripperverse. I look at it almost as disrespectful. Now, granted, the people that are probably part of this project um, <laughs> Halo in general has gone in an interesting direction And those OGs are long gone um, It's a skeleton of itself It's just a really the property in name With some mm, other elements, okay I look at it still as a slap in the face To people that have bought in That made Halo what it is To the point to where you want to actually adapt it On screen, okay uh, On television, whatever so when you have so many people that put a lot of investment in this, and that's going to be your target demographic, those are the people that are going to give it a chance. Yes, normies that don't know anything about Halo may give it a chance, but you don't even get the, the, the normies, right? You don't get their eye unless you at least have a starting base. You start with that word of mouth, all that. And so it's a slap in the face to the target audience when you say, hey, you know, this one thing that was really crucial and core to this character, we're just going to say no. Good luck. See ya. And we're going to do our own thing. It's Hollywood. More than likely what happened, not not saying that this absolutely happened. This is just why you tend to see. I didn't like it in Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. Why these people always have to have their mask off, even if it doesn't make sense in the setting. A lot of that stuff is going to be baked into their contracts, even maybe against the individual um, uh, actors or actresses that play these roles. Uh, because the agency is going to be looking out for their branding, the agencies that they work for. So it's all about branding. It's all about that next gig. And people need to see you. They need to see your face. They're going to bake it in a contract that they have some sort of screen time with their face. There's not a lot, a whole lot of uh, calls with uh, Judge Dredd. Uh, you're not going to see a lot of that. And maybe that has something to do with this. It's like I need to be seen. Therefore, at some point, this has got to come off. OK, I don't know. But I will say that I believe that it is a slap in the face to everybody that's bought into these games, the merchandise, everything surrounding it. And then once it happens and they finally get, let's say, a live action version uh, of this that uh, now I want to say finally, but you get what it is. I'm saying whether this is the second, third adaptation, it really doesn't matter. You're doing a version of it that is, in some cases, unrecognizable or there's this core thing that is completely missing. And uh, we talked about that on Tuesday night's main event. Maybe you go a different route with a different Spartan. But to say that this is Mass Chief and you go on this route, that's not going to land well with the supporters, with the fans of this property. So it is a slap in the face because you're basically saying, hey, thanks for the money and thanks for boosting us to the point to where we can even do this. But, hey, when you give us a chance, you're not going to recognize it. So. Not surprising at all that they're doubling down. This is Hollywood. 
Alpha Court Number no. One's pre-order is live. Written by the legendary Chuck Dixon and penciled by Joe Bennett. Visit Ripperverse.com to grab a copy and any of the merchandise items. Be sure to also check out the animated trailer for the campaign, which is the latest project from Ripperverse Studios. Y'all be easy.